Napoleon invented a chess opening. The following game is an absolute Napoleon masterpiece and at the end features one of the most brilliant sacrifices I think you'll ever see. I recommend parental guidance for the following video as you're about to witness intellectual destruction and I hope you enjoy. With the white pieces we have the man himself Napoleon and with the black pieces we have General Bertrand and he served as a high ranking military leader during the French Revolution. E4, this is how Napoleon decides to open up the game nice and sharp we now see the move e5, knight f3, and knight c6. From here, white can continue in a wide variety of ways. Moves like bishop c4, bishop b5, Roy Lopez. But we don't see any bishop moves today. We see the move d4. And this opening is known as the Scotch game. A very popular opening that has been featured in over 25,000 master games. And General Bertrand decides to take this with knight d4. The move that is played here over 95% of the time is e d4 here. So the move knight d4 is actually quite rare. After knight d4, Napoleon Napoleon has two options. He can either take this pawn on e5 or he can take this knight on d4 and he chooses the latter and goes knight d4. However, it was perfectly fine to take this pawn and after a move like knight e6 and bishop c4, the game would continue pretty normally. But we actually see after knight d4, we don't see this and we see knight d4. And this is where things are about to start. Most people would take back with the queen and play queen d4. However, Napoleon goes for the more aggressive option and goes bishop c4, just completely ignoring this pawn saying, you can keep your extra pawn, I'm going to develop my bishop and I'm ready to castle next move. And after bishop c4, we are officially in the Napoleon Gambit. And Napoleon was a big believer in sacrificing pawns to win the battle. However, unfortunately, a lot of the time, those pawns ended up being his men in real life. So as you see, his military tactics are coming out now. We now see the move Bishop C5, really trying to hang on to this pawn, almost being a bit greedy. Much better would have been a move like D4 and followed up with a move like Queen E7 check. But instead, after Bishop C4, we see Bishop C5 in the game. And now Napoleon plays the move C3 which is not the best move. A lot better would have been to take this pawn here, bishop f7, and you might be wondering, bishop f7? The idea is, if this bishop is taken, then this queen slides all the way to h5, checking the king and attacking this bishop, and after the king moves, we pick up the bishop. But however, bishop f7 was not seen in the game, and Napoleon missed it. Instead, he goes c3, just trying to give up more material, and queen e7. So this move, queen e7, does have a bit of poise to it, as it is actually attacking this pawn. However, Napoleon says, you know what? You can take it. I don't care about this pawn and I'm simply going to castle my king. King safety is the number one principle in chess. If you lose the king, you lose the game. Napoleon's opponent continues with the move, not queen e4, but queen e5. If you were to take this pawn, it is poisoned and after rook e1, you can't move your queen as it is pinned to the king's defense. So for that reason, you would just lose your queen. So we see the move queen e5 instead of queen e4, which would lose. Uh, and queen e5 also keeps an eye on this pawn saying, if you're gonna take, then I can take back. So Napoleon's opponent really trying to hang on to this extra pawn and Napoleon says, you know what, get out on my face and he goes F4. And the next move may come as a shock to you because DC3 was played and you might be wondering, what? Doesn't that just hang the queen? Well, your king is in check. So after DC3, the king has to move and Napoleon decided to put the king on H1, which is the only legal square. And here Napoleon's opponent really has two options to either move this queen to a safer square or to take this pawn. And fortunately for Napoleon takes this pawn thinking they're going to win this rook because there's no way to stop it and if you take here then oops. In the game bishop f7 was seen after cb3 what Napoleon had to do in this position was not to take on f7 but to take this queen. And then after this Napoleon had the deadly move queen d5 which attacks this bishop and attacks this um, what had to be played here was actually just to take here. And if you take here, then you've got queen d5 and it's all over. However, in this position, instead of taking here, Napoleon played the move bishop f7 check. King d8 was played, which is the best move. The idea what Napoleon had in mind was saying, if you're gonna take this, then after I take your queen, I take it with check and I can regain your pawn. So going back to bishop f7, this would not have been a good idea. However, we saw the move king d8, which is the top move. And now Napoleon takes this queen. However, 
black can get a queen of their own while taking white's rook and here if you're napoleon's opponent you know i'm thinking it's 1820 do you really want to beat napoleon at a game of chess i think if you were to beat napoleon in chess you would be in serious trouble by him and by serious trouble i mean your neck would be in serious trouble as it could be saying hello to the guillotine very soon anyway after the queen was taken we saw this move and now napoleon says you know what i don't like your horse and he takes it. Bishop b7 was played. If you were to take this bishop, then queen d5 attacking this bishop and attacking this rook would be horribly bad. And here Napoleon sets a deadly trap and plays the move queen b3, which seems quite harmless at the first glance. It's a very deadly motif behind this move. Here General Bertrand only has one move that saves him here and he does not find it and he goes a5 but the move he had to play was queen e5 and you're going to see why he had to play queen e5 because after a5 Napoleon plays a brilliant move and goes rook f8 check and it is a forced checkmate in five here uh, this was taken in a game this has to be taken but now the killer move bishop g5 check you might be thinking oh okay i can just block this or oh, oops takes here king takes then after queen f2 check this pawn cuts off the king's escape squares and after king d8 the final touch queen f8 checkmate so a very lovely game that all stemmed from this opening with bishop c4 which is the napoleon gambit so that is the end of the video if you want to see more videos like this like and subscribe it would also be much appreciated and if you're interested in seeing any more of my videos i've got some right here have a good day